My name is William Haddock. Okay, I teach in the division of uh, computing. <clears throat> and what we're doing in the group now, we're just finishing off some of our delivery this morning where we we're talking about switch and VLAN configuration. So with the group, what I'm going to do now, guys, okay, all the, the theory that we've been through, we're going to start putting into practice okay, so that you can understand how it actually works. Talking about something and doing it are two completely different things. So in your groups, okay, in each of your lines, okay, you can choose between yourselves who's going to do our configurations okay, that we've done. Well, I'll go back over them in Packet Tracer. And then some of you can actually connect to the pods at the end of your lines, and some can use Packet Tracer, and then switch around. Okay, but you'll see it's a completely different kettle of fish actually using the kit, and you'll come across problems that you don't encounter using Packet Tracer, like we've talked about before. Drivers, cables, devices, are they switched on? Are they operational? Are they corrupt? All this sorts of different things you need to take into consideration even before you start configuring. Okay, so if we just quickly, I'll jump on here and go back to Packet Tracer. By default, where are all the ports? Excellent, thank you, Max, in VLAN 1. So we need to remember that, like I said to you before, if you've never configured a switch or you're not sure what you're talking about, we have no, communi no communication, you can now log on to the switch and see what the, the configuration is on there and what things are connected to. So um, we're going to use a, a 2960 switch. And we'll put a few hosts on there. Now, just to verify what Max has just said, when the switch boots on, we're expecting to see all these ports in which VLAN? One. VLAN 1, excellent. OK, so enable. And remember, the commands for your switch are exactly the same for the most part as part of your initial configuration as they have been for the router. If you think of what we've done in our, the first part of the semester, and when we're working with routers, it's going to be the same now with switch, well, with switches in the, the initial configuration. So configure terminal, show VLAN brief. Why didn't that work? Excellent, thank you, Paul. Did everybody hear what Paul said? Why didn't that work? It is in wrong configuration. Good, Raj. Okay, it's in the wrong configuration mode. And you have to be aware of that, guys. Remember the hierarchical approach we talked about? Okay, so we exit that, and I go show VLAN brief, and we can see that everything, as Max told us, is in VLAN 1. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to give each of these hosts an IP address, and we're going to ping, because they're all in the same VLAN. So that can be fast Ethernet 01, fast Ethernet 02, And we'll just use the defaults on that masks. So once that's finished converging, what we're going to do is we're going to try and ping 192.168.1.2, which is our other host. Is this ping going to be successful? Why? Because they're in the same VLAN. Because they're in the same VLAN. OK. So ping. Excellent. Right, so basically what we're going to do, we're going to test what we learned this morning. Again, like I said, we're going to do all, we went through all the theory. You're going to do it on Packet Tracer and take turns and use the equipment, go on there, configure it, and see some of the differences between using the software and actually using the, the hardware that we have. So we log on to the switch. Nice and simple. Configure terminal. What do I do next? Excellent. Good, Raj. I go into interface configuration mode. And you'll see the command line changing. So what do I need to do now? Pardon? Switchboard mode access. And then what? OK. Well, no. Yeah. But what haven't I done? Exactly. We need to create the VLANs to put the devices in. I've done that on purpose, by the way. Well done, Paul. OK, 
Can anybody remember what the command was from the slides to configure the, the create the VLAN? No, that's after we've connected the. Exactly, that, that's all it was, Max. Okay, it was that there. So it's simply VLAN 10. And then we name it. Okay? And what did I tell you to do this morning after you'd done that? Exactly. Always go back and check what you've done. Okay? Why? Why would I ask you to do that? Whether it is in the nice and loud. So everybody can hear, right? Whether it is in the different LAN or same LAN. No. Guys, I've told you this across the board, even when we're working on routers. Why would I go ahead, Max? Exactly. If we have to troubleshoot further down the line, we know what we've done. Okay, well, I know I've done that because I verified it and I verified it. Now. So then you don't have to go back checking everything because I know I've done that and I checked it. Okay, so. Show. VLAN brief. We can see we have VLAN 10 created named student. So now we go into interface configuration mode, like Raj said. Anybody? Pardon? Excellent. Then what's after that, Adam? VLAN. VLAN 10. So what are we actually doing here? What am I doing? You need to speak up a bit so everybody can hear you. He's right. Eamon, what do you think? What are we actually doing here? Switch port mode access, switch port access. VLAN 10 is what Adam told me to do. Tell me what that's actually doing. Raj was right. Good, we're taking fast Ethernet 02 and we're putting it in VLAN 10. But like I said before, what we need to do is go back and check and make sure it's happened. Show VLAN brief. And what we've actually done, okay, is we've put fast Ethernet 01 in VLAN 10. Doesn't matter which is which. So we had a successful ping earlier on, didn't we? We did, because they were in the same VLAN. So let's try it again. And why am I not having a successful ping? So thinking about the slides before, okay, if I wanted to enable communication between these VLANs, Daniel, what would I have to do? If I want to enable communication between the student VLAN and VLAN 1, what would I need to do? I don't want to do that. Okay, because there's, okay, they're separate departments. I want to keep them separate. So what oh, you're saying. Oh, oh, so you need a, um, a layer 3. Um, Excellent, Bilal. Good. A layer 3 device and in a router or a layer 3 switch. Excellent. Good. So what I want you guys to do now, okay, in your lines, in your groups, okay, is put this together in Packet Tracer, okay, use the commands that we've been through on the slides to put your VLANs together, put your hosts in your VLANs, do a successful ping to make sure that it's working, change the VLAN, and then try and ping. Okay, right, so, Eamon, Pricewell? So find, can I just get through, Fancy, please? Right, so from the physical perspective, what, are you guys okay? Yeah. Good, excellent. Okay, so what we're thinking about, okay, so when you've done it in Packet Tracer, okay, you've connected all the cables. Now you'll have to do it physically. Okay, so what cable, can anybody remember what cable this is? Okay, good. Okay, it's going to go into the console port. It's a rollover cable. This end is the serial, goes into our, our PC. And so if we follow this through, okay, and we'll look at this device here, okay? So it's, which port is it? Okay, 
Which port is it going to go into? Console. Console. Excellent, Eamon. So let's jump back on the PC. So can you see that, Safan? Yeah. Right now, guys, if you look at these, okay, what do they normally have? An it's an RJ45, but what, what's missing, Sophie? And the locking clip. The little clip. Okay, so sometimes, and these are things you need to be aware of, that you don't experience in packet trace. So when I put this in, okay, if there's no clip on it, what could happen? It can fall out. It, it'll fall out, or even if it's a millimeter, okay, and there's no contact, mm -hmm. okay, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get it to work. Okay, so these are the sort. Yeah. So this is why, so things like this here are things you need to be, be thinking about. Right, so, good, right. So let's go back on the PC. So are you okay with that end? Good, All right, okay. Okay, that's the command that we used early. Okay, open. Right, it's not working. So we don't have a connection from here to our device. Why? Think about, it could be that. What else might it be? Maybe the cable is not connected. Okay, go and check. Go and check. So remember, follow the. Excellent. Good stuff, on. So just check. It's not on. Guys, did somebody switch it off? <laughs> is it switch? Oh, look at that. It's working. Go figure. But these guys, these, I mean, joking aside, but these are the sorts of things that can happen. Okay? The things that we, so this is why you have to have a good understanding fundamentally of what's happening underneath. Because when things are working, it's great. But it's not just as straightforward using these, is it? No, it's more complicated. Yeah, but it's good. Okay, because it's experience that you're going to need in real life, okay, when you work on these devices. Instead of going, oh, packet tracer! Oh, I can't use packet tracer. Or GNS3 or whatever. <laughs> oh, please, come back, packet tracer, all is forgiven. No, slash, good man. It's one. <laughs> no, that's zero again. One. Oh, one. <laughs> so enter. Now you can see it's changed the interface configuration mode. So now it's switch port mode access. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Access. Now, yeah, and now you can remember start using your tab key. Yeah. Okay. Enter. And then what? What are we going to do now? Access. So show. Uh, no. Switch, switch port. port access. Access. V v line. VLAN ten. ten. Good. Use your use your tab key. Makes life an awful lot easier. Yeah. Access. Yeah. And faster. Yep. Space. Excellent. Now, end. Type an end. And go and look what you've done. You're going to check your configuration. Excellent. Good. And we can see. Good. So now try and do your ping. So will these ping? Will your ping be successful? I think so. No, yeah. I don't think so, no. no exactly. Why won't it be? Because um, it's in a different network, right? It's a different VLAN. VLAN yeah. Exactly right. So what do we need in order to communicate between VLANs? We need to get them in the same. To get to VLAN 3. No. <laughs> we need a layer 3 device. device yeah. We need a router or a layer 3 switch. Okay. okay. So, so try your ping. ping. Yeah. So that's the... Okay. So am I going to ping... You're going to ping... Well, you tell me what you're going to ping. No, 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 go back on here. Go, no, go back on here. So you're going to ping, okay, you got a reply from, you ping from 1.2 one mm -hmm. and got a successful reply. Yeah. You've changed VLAN, so what you're going to do now, you're going to try and ping 1.1. One. Okay. okay. And will you get a reply? No, I don't think so. Why? Because um, they are not in the same VLAN and we need a, a VLAN... No, you need a layer 3 device. device. Good, exactly. So let's try. And cross our fingers, because we don't want to be getting a reply, do we? Good. No, no, 
No, that's fine. That's just a pen command. So, excellent. So it worked. So what to do now is go and take PC2 or FA02 and put it back in VLAN 1 and ping and see if you get a connection. We will be moving on in subsequent weeks to look at how we're going to communicate between them. But this is where we're starting. Okay? So take fast Ethernet 02, do exactly the same as you've just done, put it back in VLAN 1. Okay, do you just click on the switch, do show VLAN brief. In fact, well you can see it here. So you've got fast Ethernet 01 is in there. So take it out of VLAN 10 and put it into the default VLAN. So which gonna, is VLAN 1. I'm going to have to bring this on down. No, you're going to bring... Well, you can do that. Yeah, you can bring Fast Ethernet 02 okay. and put it in there okay. and then see if you can ping. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Excellent. If you need me, just, just give me a call. Okay. Right, guys. Covered a lot of ground today. Good job. Did you, you see the difference between using simulation software, which is excellent piece of kit for learning, okay, because you can, you can get away with... Well, you can learn all the commands, without having to need all the kit and all the rest of it, and quite extensive as well. But it's a completely different kettle of fish, isn't it? Or you tell me, between using Packet Tracer, good as it is, or GNS3, good as they are, between using the actual kit, what's some of the problems that you encountered? Talk to me. Cable, things not working? Yeah, basically, isn't it? Okay, so it's not straightforward, and this is what I said to you before, about thinking outside the box. Okay, it's fine when everything's working. What we need to know is exactly what we're doing when we're troubleshooting. Okay, so to quickly go over what we covered today, particularly in this module. Okay, tell me please what a VLAN is. Daniel. Okay, and what is it? It's a, a um, software-based um, topology for your network. Okay, so exactly. So we're taking that physical topology and manipulating it, okay, using software, and degrade our, our virtual local area network. Okay, in the same way, we have logical addressing at layer three of the OSI model, okay. VLANs can segment networks based on function, team, or application. Charles, why would you do that? Why would you segment your network using VLANs? And nice and loud so everyone can hear you, please. Nice and loud. Yeah, okay, you couldn't control the traffic. Okay, <clears throat> so Max, what does a VLAN do to broadcast traffic or broadcast domains? Excellent, so all broadcast traffic stays on its own VLAN. Is that good or bad? Good. Were you going to add something else, Charles? Well, this, what we're doing here, this goes along a little bit, like Adam talked about, okay, the question that he had this morning. You're in control. If there's a need, you manage that control. So we're not saying this is, this is all you can do. If there's a need, you make it work, okay? Add devices, create trunks, allow traffic as per your requirements, okay? Now, we've only obviously delved into this this morning, but as we move further on, we'll actually go into that more, Charles, when you're actually managing your VLANs, managing traffic, managing trunks, managing users, okay, such like and so forth. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Each VLAN is considered a separate logical network. Everybody happy with that concept? Okay, it's exactly what Max, Max has just said. Okay, a trunk is the point-to-point -point link that carries more than one VLAN. Okay, we will do more on trunks, okay, this afternoon in our, in our session, okay, <clears throat> but nice and loud for me, Raj. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, okay, so you ready? <laughs> okay, what VLAN traffic does a trunk carry by default? All of it. All VLANs will carry, will, will move across that trunk by default, okay, and then we can prune it as per our needs. Okay, we'll do more on that this afternoon. Okay, VLAN <coughs> tag fields include type, user priority, CFI, and VID. Okay, what protocol do we use that we mentioned earlier on? I said I would identify it using dot one Q, 
802.1Q. Okay, we will go into that in more detail. Okay, a separate voice VLAN is required to support v voice over IP. Now, we're not going to actually configure them. Okay, but that stands the reason, bearing in mind what we have talked about. Is everybody happy with that? Um, normal range VLAN configurations are stored in the VLAN dot dot flash and file. Okay, one thing that we didn't cover this morning, okay, but, well, we've got plenty of time to do it, okay, that when we're removing VLANs, we can do it, but they're stored in flash in VLAN dot dot. I will show you how to remove the VLAN information, but we have to be careful because what else is stored in flash? No, our config isn't stored in flash. Where's our config stored? NVRAM. Excellent, that's stored in our NVRAM. What's stored in flash? Remember the boot up process? Our iOS, our operating system's in there. So we need to be careful okay, when we're deleting flash okay, that we delete only the, the VLAN information. Okay, an access port can belong to one data VLAN at a time, okay, but, most, but may also have a voice VLAN. Daniel, you asked me that question. Okay. Guys, what's the two modes that a port's going to be in? Access or trunk. Good. A trunk is a layer two link between two switches that carry traffic for all VLANs, which is what we were just saying. Okay. Again, we're going to go into the configuration of that okay. <clears throat> a little bit later. Well, this afternoon. Trunks need tagging okay, for the various VLANs. Typical 802.1Q is what we talked about. Um, 802.1Q, again, I will cover this this afternoon. Tagging makes provision for one native VLAN that will remain untagged. Guys, untagged traffic will get put into VLAN 1. As the traffic leaves the switch, it gets tagged. Okay? The end devices have no idea that it exists. Okay, the other switch will remove that tag and send it to the correct VLAN. If, it, if traffic doesn't have a tag, it will be put into the native VLAN. Again, that's more of a legacy thing, which we will talk a little bit okay, later on in later on sessions. Um, we'll go into more detail. Um, we've already said an interface can be set to trunking, non-trunking. Trunk negotiation, yeah. Has anybody got any more questions or any questions? <coughs> 